Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 17 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now, I've been looking at various systems over the last few weeks and how to set the palette definitions on those systems. So, today we're on the last of the systems we're going to be looking at at this time, and it's going to be the Game Boy Color and the regular Game Boy. So, here you can see some samples of how this, it will look. So, we're going to be defining colors on the Game Boy Color, as you can see. We've got the Chibiko character in the usual colors, and we've got Hello World in um, palette 7, which is always the it's always the last palette or the last color options being used by my font routine, which is why they're in a different color to the background. And then you've got a screenshot here of the black and white version. And you can see you've got the, um, the text in white, the background in black, and the Chibi Go sprite again. And as before, it's the exact same sprite and pretty much the exact same code running on both these systems, just with the exception that the palette code definitions are slightly different. So, well, how do colors work on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color? Well, both systems are essentially four color systems. So, a tile and all of this example are just um, tiles. The Hello World text is tiles, and this is tiles as well. And the Grimes Z80 project did not use any sprites. Um, the, the, the ship that the player controlled and all the enemies and the bullets, they were all actually tiles. So, that's something to note. So, sprites and tiles all have four colors. And on the um, regular Game Boy, there are effectively three palettes, one palette for the background and two optional palettes for the tiles. And we'll go into that in just a moment. On the Game Boy Color, then you have eight palettes from zero to seven, and each one has four colors, and you can define those colors using five bits per channel. So you have a, a wide variety of options for the Game Boy Color. That's not the case on the black and white Game Boy. You only have four possible colors, and you can see them here. Zero, zero means all the pixels aren't set, and the light background of the Game Boy screen can be seen. 0, 1 is slightly dark grey, 1, 0 is dark grey, and 1, 1, which is of course 3, is the darkest grey, which is as close to black as the Game Boy can do. Okay. Now, in the same way as on all of our other systems, on the Game Boy Color, we're going to be setting the definitions using a, a single nibble per channel color definition, which we will convert to the required format of the Game Boy Color. Now, if you've not seen this series, we're doing that because we're using the same color definitions on every single one of our systems, meaning we can use a single common palette for all of our systems that can support that palette. But on the black and white Game Boy, it's not really appropriate to try and convert that palette when you've only got four potential colors to convert to. I did actually try it and it didn't work very well. So the example we're looking at today, will use that very um, defined one nibble per channel color definition for the Game Boy Color. But the black and white Game Boy, we're just gonna look at two very simple options. One is light background with dark colors, and the other is dark background with light colors. And in one case, the background will be zero, the first color will be one, the second color will be two, and the third color will be three, so the background will be light and the, the colors will get darker. The other will be the opposite way around, the background will be color three, which will mean it's dark, and the colors will get lighter. And that's what you can see in this black and white example here. Okay. So, well, what about the theory of how to actually set the colors on the black and white Game Boy? Well, it's very simple. You Each color definition is set by a byte, and it, two bits of that byte define each of the colors. So the rightmost two bits define color zero, the next two bits define color one, the next two bits define color two, and the final two bits, the leftmost, define color three. And they should be one of these four options here. So all you need to do is set a, set a, a combination of those bits and write them to FF47 for the tile map, FF48 for the default sprite colors, and FF49 for the alternate sprite colors, and you define which of those sprite palette sets to use on the sprite when you actually draw the sprite to screen. There's a, there's a single bit that defines palette 0 or palette 1. One important thing to notice is color 0 on sprites is actually transparent, so you would never see the color that you'd selected as the color 0 in the sprite palette appear on the screen, because that 0 color is always transparent. So that's something important to note. Now on the Game Boy Color, we've got a much more advanced palette option, but we only have two memory addresses we use. The first one selects the address in the palette definition that we're going to write to, and then the second, and that's FF68, and the second one, FF69, writes the data to that location in the palette. How are the palettes defined? Well, because we're using five bits per channel, we're using two bytes for each color definition. So the rightmost bit is the part of the color definition, low byte first, then high, little Indian as it's called. So then the next two bits are the color number within the palette. So there's four colors per palette. And then the next three bits are the palette themselves. So two bytes per color, four colors per palette, and 
eight palettes in total. And so that's why it uses these six bits here. The sixth bit does nothing. And the seventh bit is quite important. This is an auto increment bit. And this is very handy for us because once we've written the low byte of the color definition, we probably want to write the high byte. And in some cases, we may actually want to write all of the colors in one go. I say in some cases because in today's example, we're always setting the colors by giving a color number and the new palette definition in H and L. So we don't actually increment from one color to the next or one palette to the next. But if you were writing game by color specific code, that's probably what you'd want to do. It's just because my code is very generic across all of the systems we're looking at, it's more appropriate to pass a palette number and a color and run the call multiple times for all the palettes we want to change. So there we go. So once we've selected the location we want to write our data to, we just write the data to FF69 in low high format. And so the rightmost five bits are the red channel. The next five bits, which are split across the two bytes, are the green channel. And then the last five bits, which are here, are the blue channel. And then there's one bit here that is completely unused. So there we go. So let's have a look at our actual code then. So today we're going to be using the exact same code example as we saw last week. So here's our palette definition here. We're only using the four main colors today because the um, Chibico Sprite just uses the default palette and it's only four color. But that's, um, it's, it's, it's the exact same code as we were using on the other systems, on the Game Gear and things. So very generic code here. And that's going to be passed to our Game Boy Color conversion routine to define the Game Boy Color palette. So before we have a look at the Game Boy Color Palette, let's have a look at how we define palettes on the black and white Game Boy. So we've got very, two very simple options here today. We've just got a command called set Game Boy Palette Dark, which will set the background to black and the highmost color to white and the other two colors to the in between shades of gray. And then we've got an alternate light option, set Game Boy Palette Light. This will set the background to white and the topmost color to black. And again, the two in between colors to the in between shades of gray. And then once we've set A to the bitmap, and just to remind you, these two bits are the background color. So 1, 1 is equal to 3, which is the most dark color. Then 1, 0 is 2, which is the next darkest color. 0, 1 is 1, which is the lightest gray shade. And then 0, 0 is effectively white, which just shows through to the background of the Game Boy's screen. So we just jump to this routine here. What it does is it sets the background using FF47 um, to A. Then it sets the first bright color to FF48. And just to remind you, that means that this color will never actually show through because the lowest color in a sprite is always transparent. We then flip all of the bits and set the alternate palette to the inverse of whatever the previous one was. Now, as I've said, we are losing out on that zero, zero color in the sprite. It might be that you would want your sprites to use the third color as white and the first color as black, leaving the zero transparent color as, as your transparency, but in this case, we're not doing that. So you might want to customize this a little bit, but this is just some very simple default definitions to show you how the palettes are used. Now, when it comes to the Game Boy Color, we're using our standard palette definition routine. This palette definition routine won't do anything on the black and white Game Boy. The black and white Game Boy just skips over it. But what we're doing is we're loading D and D from this memory address here that we just saw, and then we're loading A with the palette number we want to change. And we do that here with this subtraction command here. We're doing an exchange D and HL. Now you'll notice we're using a slightly odd command here. That's because the Game Boy, the GBZ80 doesn't have an EXDHL command, but we do have a substitute, which you can see here. Um, I've made a substitute macro with some pushes and pops, which does the same thing as DEHL because the Game Boy Z80 doesn't have it. So there we go, no problems there. And then we're running the set palette command, which is the same command as we're running every other week. So how do we actually set the palette? Well, it's basically the same as we've seen in the previous weeks. So the first thing we have to do is we have to split out the nibbles because we're using one nibble per channel. And so we get the blue here, we shift it to the left and store it in D. We get the red here and we have to shift it across to the right and then store it in E. And then finally we get the green we're using this special GBZ80 command swap A, which swaps the low and high nibbles. So that's just the equivalent of four RLCAs. And then we shift two of the bits into D because as I said before, the green cut channel is actually spanned across both of the bytes. So we do need to shift a few of the bits into that alternate one there. Then we all in E, which we stored before. And now we have D and E with the new values in the correct format for the Game Boy Color. So what we next need to do now is we need to load in the memory address of the color we want to change. 
Now the color we wanted to change was passed in as A here. Now there's two bytes per color definition on the Game Boy Color. So what we do is we add A to itself, which effectively doubles it. And then we stored A into the C register, which is not used in this part here. So we now load in the A, load A back from the C register here. We want to enable auto increment because we need to write the low byte and then the high byte of the color definition. And this is the easiest way to do it. So we just add 128, which effectively sets the high bit of the memory address to one. And if you remember before, the high bit here is the auto increment command. So that tells the Game Boy Color's palette register definitions to auto increment once we've written the first byte. Now we write that to HL, which we've pointed to FF68, which if you remember is the selection command. We now need to write to FF69. And we've done a bit of a trick here. You'll notice this command LDI. This is another GBZ80 special command. It means load and increment. What it does is it loads A into HL, as you would expect, and then it increments HL. So HL is no longer FF68, it's now FF69, which is where we need it to point to write the color definition here. So that's what we do. We just load E into the accumulator and then store it to HL, and then we load in D into the accumulator and store it into HL. And that's really all there is to it. And there we go. So that's all it takes for us to define the Game Boy Color palettes in exactly the same way as we did on the previous systems. And as I've said before, this is the basically the exact same code as I used in the Grime Z80 project. And in that project, I was able to define pretty much all of the color definitions for all of the systems, with the exception of things like the ZX Spectrum and the MSX one which can't take these RGB color definition. But I was basically able to do the job on all of the systems with a single palette definition and that made working on so many systems a lot easier. I hope you've enjoyed these, this series. This is probably the last of the palette definition routines for the um, Z80 systems. I'll be doing the 6502 and the 68000 series in the future. But for now we're going to move on from the palette. We're going to be looking at sound next. So we're going to start off with the AY sound chip, which is a very common sound chip. And we're going to look at how to make some simple beeps and um, kind of noise sounds. And we'll look at uh, all of the other register options for if you want to do more advanced stuff. And we're going to create a little routine which I created for the Grime Z80 project called Chibi Sound, which is a simple command which you can run that will make a beep of a pitch and it can be a low pitch or a high pitch or it can be a distorted pitch and it will work in the same way give or take on all of the systems so if you want to make little bleeps and um, kind of distortion sounds for your um, shooting game or something which is what Grime Z80 did you can write the code once and then use it on all the systems and know you'll get pretty much the same effect on all of them so that's going to be something really interesting and I hope you'll follow me for that series of sound effects videos anyway thanks for watching today I hope you've enjoyed it and goodbye